This program is about exploration, pushing a cave to the limits of endurance, about surveying and mapping in order to track leads to find more cave. But it's primarily about connections, one connection in particular, the connection through a sump of McClung's Cave to Maxwellton Sink Cave in Greenbrier County, West Virginia. First, a little history. Maxwellton Sink Cave was explored and mapped to 10 miles in length in the mid-60s by the Pittsburgh, Boston, and Philly grottos. Access was through the Cove Creek entrance at a large limestone headwall near the Greenbrier Airport. But in 1969, Hurricane Camille flooded the headwall and filled the entrance with debris. During this same period, nearby McClung's Cave was being explored and surveyed. It eventually maxed out at about 18 miles in length. In 2002, a new entrance to Maxwellton Sink Cave was dug open and the resurvey of Maxwellton commenced. By 2016, the survey was nearly complete with a total of 13 miles. In April of 2016, an obscure lead at the end of Williams Passage, the God Survey, was dug open. As it turned out, this dig flooded during heavy rain events, which made this a real challenge. The foxhole led to a major discovery in Maxwellton. It eventually popped out into Sweetwater, a major river which ran from north to south. This discovery almost doubled the length of Maxwellton, adding nearly 10 miles of large virgin cave to Maxwellton. But even more important, and very pertinent to this program, was the discovery of a sump at the upstream limit of Sweetwater River in July of 2018. By use of topo overlays and line plots of both Maxwellton and McClung's, it was quickly determined that the upstream sump in Maxwellton had to be the same stream as the downstream sump in Chocolate Avenue of McClung's. The distance between the two sumps was estimated to be between 100 and 200 feet. It took over a year, but a dive trip was finally planned for the dry season, August 31st, 2019. Two sump divers, Zeb Lilly and Brian Williams, and nine Sherpas met in the field above the Leitner entrance to McClung's Cave on a beautiful Saturday. The Leitner entrance to McClung's Cave is vertical, involving three drops of varying length from 40 feet to 12 feet. First, there is a 12-foot deep gnarly downclimb which leads immediately to a 45 foot deep free drop. Offset from the bottom of the 45 foot drop is a 25 foot pit into a large room. As with the 45 foot pit, gear was lowered one bag at a time and piled up until everyone was down. To have a successful sump dive, lots of gear is necessary. In this case, there were six large dive bags for tanks, regulators, lights, fins, masks, and other gear necessary for a dive. Plus a 40-pound bag of lead weights, and then everyone's personal gear. It was a lot of gear for nine cavers to carry. This one of the tanks? Yes. Yeah. A body-sized eight-foot deep hole into a short stream crawl pose the challenge for fitting the large packs down the hole. After this awkward spot, there was a third and final vertical pit, a 12-foot nuisance climb. After this, vertical gear could be dropped as it was not needed for the rest of the trip. The next obstacle was the Champagne Squeeze, which was the connection dig between McClung's Cave and Leitner Cave. The connection was dug open a while back when McClung's was first being surveyed. The connection crawl is actually a lot larger than it was when it was originally opened, but it was still pretty awkward getting a ton of diving gear through the small crawl. All right. The trip to the sump involves traversing 3,600 feet of cave passage and dropping down 350 feet in elevation from the entrance to the sump. A 
couple of hundred feet from the Champagne Squeeze is the Tufa Trail, a thousand foot long, mostly walking stream passage filled with large rimstone pools. Throughout most of the year, the pools are filled with flowing water, but when the summer is dry, most of the lower Tufa Trail is dry, as it was the day of our dive expedition. Tufa Trail intersects with Freeman Avenue, a large breakdown trunk going both left and right. Tufa Trail comes out into Freeman Avenue at ceiling level, so it is necessary to climb down 60 feet before heading southwest toward the sump. As can be seen, there is some nice easy walking passage, giving some respite to the climbs, crawls, and tight spots. But alas, it doesn't last, as the first pancake crawl must be negotiated. Are we tired yet? <laughs> and what's next? A lift tube, easy to get down, but leads to what? More crawls. This is the final set of crawls before the sump. A set of army and belly crawls that are 200 feet long, with the final tight spot having only 11 inches of clearance. Finally, the sump, with plenty of headroom and a nice beach for getting ready for the dive. <laughs> so what do you think, Zed? <laughs> Look good? <laughs> all right. It took three hours and 15 minutes to get all the gear from the entrance to the sump, traveling just 3,600 feet. But it was only 1 p.m. with plenty of time to do the dive. Visibility was okay. The stream was low, and the water temperature was around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and so the dive was on. Brian Williams was elected to do the initial dive. Getting ready for a dive is a long and careful process. It is important to get everything right because your life really depends on it. There are no second chances in sump diving. Also, in most cases, sump diving is a solo activity mainly because there is usually not much space in a sump and visibility is easily reduced to the point where you would not even be able to see a partner. It would be too easy to get tangled in each other's gear if more than one diver tried to explore a sump. Not a good thing when there is no surface to swim up to for air. Yes, Fins are also a chore to put on but also a lot of fun. Finally, it's time for Brian to disappear into the depths of McClung's sump. Okay. 
know what's about to happen. <laughs> Zam going survey. 47 minutes later, the suspense builds. Was he successful? Wait for it. Doing his line. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Welcome to Beck's Club. With this historic dive, Max Welton Sink Cave and McClung's Cave are now one. The Great Savannah Cave System is born. A 41-mile cave system moving up to be the contender for the longest cave in West Virginia. And at this length, number nine in the U.S. Let me get the survey. Uh, about 120 feet. 120. <laughs> but uh, the slope up is a long gravel slope like this. Yeah. A long way up. Uh, and I finally found one decent place to go through and squeeze through. It's tight. No, it's not, it's not tight. Uh, these you can push through, but on the way back, uh, coming back down, I couldn't find a good way through <laughs> because it was just so silky. And then the line goes up the slope. When you start up this gravel slope, uh, it's pretty, it's tight over here. And then, you know, up, up it's way a long, huge gravel slope, and then there's the uh, top up there. I think I stayed pretty much to the right-hand wall. You can slip up right here, and then cop threes up over here. So this, there's a lot of cop on here. You'll see it. It's easy to get up. But it's not a done deal until it's surveyed. So Zeb Lilly gears up in order to survey from COB3 in Sweetwater to FFF2 in McClung's. Underwater survey is not done in the same manner as dry cave surveying. The stations in a survey are the tie-off points for the dive line. Distance is measured by counting the knots in the dive line between each tie-off point. A compass and clinometer are used for azimuth and inclination, but the readings are obtained by sighting along the dive line. That's the only thing you can do when visibility is only a few inches, just enough to read your instruments and write the data down in a waterproof book. And now it's Zeb's turn, as he slowly makes his way down into the sun. Zeb is gone for 30 minutes, definitely long enough to have done the survey. Did he get it done? And yes, the survey was done. Now to make the tie-in shots. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I got it all. I got through there. I found your salt steak. Put the station right here. Okay. So 37 to here. Will be FFF2. The survey through the sump turned out to be 234 feet long. The sump itself was 160 feet with a max depth of 30 feet. This is a sketch of Zeb Lilly's survey and how the map looks with McClung's tied to Max Weldon through the sump. A great and historic achievement for all involved in this project. The trip out was just as hard and long as the trip in, but we'll skip all that and go right to the celebration at the entrance. Yeah, that's alcohol abuse. <laughs> it's a great system. Savannah cave system. Yeah. So, what's next? There is still active exploration going on in Max Welton and in McClung's. But just 600 feet north of McClung's is Ludington's Cave, a nine mile system. It's only a matter of time before that connection will be made. That will make for a 50 plus mile system. As you can see, there is still plenty to do and caves to explore. The Great Savannah Cave System is still growing.